as that means, you know, that T's and E and that's the right in. Uh, so I wanted to kind of do a clarification uh, on a question as it relates to some of our soul, and that's going to lead into the question that Brother, Brother Robson has. So let's go to Genesis 2 and 7. Does anybody have the American Standard Version? who get into granular trying to describe the spiritual. This is the spiritual things that we're talking about, right? And they try to bring that into the mundane, but it serves no purpose. So I always think about this. Whenever I try to study the Bible, I think about it in this context. And, I, and this is as it relates to in scripture, in scripture, in scripture, right? So at one point, you got to decide do you have enough, has God given you enough information in the Bible for you to know what? Right, that's the way I think of it. So the way I think of it, has God given me enough information in the Bible to know what? Mm -hmm. Right? So if, if, if what I'm studying scripturally is enough information for me to know this, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm good. Now, part of the thing is that as humans, we have this space and time continuum, right? So when we think how to be saved, we don't think about it in the way that God thinks about it. We think about it in terms of a time, right? But we learn that the Bible teaches us our souls are eternal, right? Mm -hmm. So, how to be saved starts from when we're born all the way to glorification, mm -hmm. right? Right? So that's, that's how we... So whenever you're reading the Bible or you're studying the Bible scripturally and you're trying to work through what is the Bible saying, then I think this is, this is the context in which... So you can sum this up in one word, right? Right? And so if whatever it is you're studying scripturally, you can look at it in this context, and I think it, it, it keeps us or us from going down rabbit holes of conjecture. Mm -hmm. Right? And then that's what men have done. Right? Mm -hmm. like they've gone down all these rabbit holes, like justification for sin by faith started way back in the early 16th century of priests defining what it meant, and they've gone from there, and it's like books, you know, big, dense books written on one thing, justification by faith. Mm -hmm. Multiple books written on one thing, justification by faith, right? Um, and once you lose this context of what you're trying to get from Scripture, then that's essentially where I think we can get lost in what God is trying to say. So this is just something that I do as a tool. Whenever I study scripture, I just try to think about the scripture in context of salvation, right? Because we know God created us to live with him eternally, right? And then if we, if we get enough out of the scripture to know that, then I believe we've gotten what we need. Anything beyond that, we're at risk. I'm not saying we will, but we 
or at risk. And I'll give you some examples um, of what I mean by that. But the reason I say that is because a lot of people have gotten mixed into this. It's a transcendental metaphysical concept, right? It's a spiritual concept. And so trying to define finitely what the soul is, right? Trying to define finitely what the spirit is requires you to go beyond. Now, what I have learned, and I, I taught this in one of my prior classes, what the Bible does do is it does tell you what they do. So the Bible will, like we use the Hebrew word, I gave the Hebrew word for spirit, right? What is the spirit? But the Bible is replete with what the spirit does. Mm -hmm. The human spirit as well as the Holy Spirit. The Bible is replete with what the body does. The Bible is replete with what the soul does. The Bible teaches us the soul that sins shall die. Right? Okay. So if you ever want to study this, and, I, and I've taught it in a, in, a, in a prior class, if you approach it from the standpoint of understanding what these, the function of these things are, then the Bible gives us multiple scriptures. When we try to start getting into the grain of what is the, the soul, how do you define the soul, how do you define the spirit, it gets murky, right? Because then you have to depend on a lot of encyclopedias and you got to depend on all these different people. But the question is, is okay, do I have to know in a granular fashion what the soul is, right? Or do I, and boy, if you have to the cast in terms of salvation, then it's an easy answer. If you look at it in the context of salvation, I got one. The Bible says I got one, right? And then the Bible says, where will that soul go, right? Two places. It can go to eternal life in heaven, or it could go to yeah, eternal death. So, so I know that. So I, I got one. I have a soul. Now the Bible does tell me the different things that the soul does as a function, right? If you read that and study that, and then but finally I have one, and the Bible tells me where it's, the choices are for it to end up. Right? In the context of salvation, that's an easy question. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to get into, uh, and I use an example, you know, uh, like DNA, it's like our essence. The soul is the essence, right? That, that's about as far as I can tell. Yeah. yeah. That's about as far as I can go. <laughs> yeah. I just know that what the Bible teaches is that each one of us has our own. Mm -hmm. right? right? Each one of us has our own. Now, when you look at the spirit at creation, what's unique about the spirit is the spirit comes from one source, mm -hmm. right? right? Which is God, right? Our human spirit, right? It comes from one source. Now, if you really want to get a good understanding of the spirit, you study what the spirit, the Bible teaches that the spirit does, right? And how it relates to salvation. So I've studied the spirit in different ways. The Bible says, and um, you know, I won't digress too much, but just to give you an example of what I'm saying conceptually, the Bible teaches us not to have a, you know, I can read what that word is, a haughty spirit, right? That's what the Bible, that's in the scripture. It says don't have a haughty spirit. Why? Because as a believer, if you have a haughty spirit, then it doesn't allow the Holy Spirit because you are, you are raising your spirit. That's what haughty spirit means. Mm -hmm. You're raising your spirit above. The Bible says blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? As a believer, you want to be poor in spirit so that you can be led by the spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Right? So the Bible teaches us functionality in these different things. Right? And so that's where I try to focus. Just stay with what the scripture to be honest with you, that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I try to look at it always in the context of this. What we know is this. God wants, God's desire is that what? Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. men be what? Mm -hmm. Say. 
and come to what? The knowledge of the truth. truth. Right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Right? So God wants me to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And if I could read scripture and study scripture just in that context, then a lot of the extraneous stuff has no relevance. <clears throat> right? So you don't get lost into, you know, things like the tribulation, the millennia, all those things. You know, and again, I'm not a revelation, you know, scholar. Right? <laughs> so and don't claim me. But what I do know, the Bible teaches us that which we looked at last week, when we die, the body, right, the grave, goes back to the dust. Mm -hmm. Bible then teaches us that the spirit goes where? Our human spirit goes where? Back to God. Back to God mm -hmm. right? Okay, then the Bible teaches us that our soul goes where? Mm -hmm. If we're believers. Mm -hmm. Right? Goes to Hades. Yes. Right? Okay, mm -hmm. okay I'm, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Right? And then there's another part to it. Right? But the Bible teaches us that at, that's the moment that the determination is made. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Is that, what the, is that what we learned last week? At that moment, mm -hmm. that's what there's no purgatory that I found in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right? That I've seen. There's no second chances that I've seen in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you think about it, why would there need to be a purgatory? Right? Because you've had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right? You've had the opportunity. Right? And God is a God of order. Mm -hmm. Right? So God would say, okay, if you and you in Hades now and you can have a second chance, then what's gonna change? What's gonna change? Well, then if you get a second chance, why not a third chance? Mm -hmm. Why not a fourth chance? Why not a fifth chance? Right? Right? So that doesn't then begin to make sense, except from a man's standpoint. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, from a man's standpoint, it makes sense. Because it's like, well, if I don't want to believe, which is, we all learn that believe is to do, like, if I don't want to do that, <laughs> you know, during my earthly existence, I want to have a second chance. Then I'll do it. <laughs> right? And so as a man, you can say, okay, well, let me create this concept called purgatory. Right? Purgatory says, you have a second chance. Right? Or the millennial, the tribulation, the whole thing that see, well, Christ is gonna come down, and everybody's gonna raise up, and then he's gonna come down again. It's gonna be, you know, all these things going on the earth. And like, well, that's just another version of a second chance. Right? Okay. All right. So I, you know, I want to take a little time to to, you know, just kind of talk about that. So Genesis 2 7 tells us about these three things. Right. Now, the key word that I want to preface in that scripture, and this is where I kind of the question came from, is that the scripture says soul, but it says what? Living. Living. Okay. So, the breath <coughs> created, it didn't say just soul. He created a living soul. Okay, so the soul is there, and then the breath was a body form. You have a soul, and then it's the breath, it's the spirit of God that created the living soul. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? Okay, scripture. Okay, so let's 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 let scripture interpret a little bit more scripture. Let's go to Zechariah, and the reason I'm really going over this is because. Again, I think when we're in evangelism, right, uh, Safan has a, you know, a beautiful study that he uses, like, and I've used it, um, and I mean, it's just a, it's a great study that focuses on what's important to learn for someone who wants to be saved, like one of the best studies I've ever seen in the organization. Um, but him and I had talked about doing some things, and I was like, you know, I think we should add this in there. Because he has elements of it, right? But I think we should add this in there, right? So that people, uh, and the concepts aren't as diluted as people make them out to be, right? But I think it's important to understand 
what happens when a person is born, right? And then as they move through life, what happens in the process, right? And I think, so the class I would teach that I'm teaching now on the three life cycle, phase of life cycle justification, sanctification, glorification, would be taught differently if I was teaching it to a non-believer. Right? But I'm trying to teach the class in a way that if you guys are going out to evangelize, you can pick up pieces of it that are important for you to share with a non-believer. Right? And just think about it. If you start with someone, you know, we, we like to start with, we like to start with the church. Right? And how we're different. Right? That's, that's, but that's not how a person is created. Right? But if we start with, hey, God created you. And this is what he created. He created your body. He created your soul. And he created your spirit. Right? Now that's a little different than saying, hey, that Baptist church that you go to, they, that, you know, that's not the truth. We got the truth. Right? Now I'm not saying anybody does that, but I'm saying that's the, that's the reputation. Right. Mm -hmm. that members of the Church of Christ have. Mm -hmm. But think about it if we started out with sharing the gospel saying God created you. Right? Then the next step is okay, God created you. Now let me show you in Genesis that God created you to live with him. Mm -hmm. Forever. Mm -hmm. Right? Different, different, right? Because now they're just absorbing information. They're not comparing mm -hmm. anything, right? They're not comparing anything. They're just absorbing information. But it's all true, right? So it's the reverse engineer, right, that I talked about earlier. It applies to them too. So if we start out with, hey, God created, it may seem simple. But Stefan does that too, because he'll ask them, hey, you know, what was the fruit that they ate, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, it was an apple. I'll say, well, let's go to the scripture, mm -hmm. right? And then they're like, oh, doesn't say it was an apple, mm -hmm. right? And it's a very good mechanism to get people's heart to be open to receive information, mm -hmm. right? But as I was thinking about this, what if we started with, with our with our sharing the gospel, you know, and this is not when you meet somebody on the street, but when you sit down with a study and you say, hey, let's look at the beginning. And in the beginning, God created you like he created me. He created you with a body, he created you with a soul, he created you with a spirit, right? You don't gotta go into the complication of it, and you don't even gotta let them go into it. But it's just, mm -hmm. that's what happened. Then, what we learn in Genesis is that God created us to live with him forever. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why he created you. Mm -hmm. He created you to live with him forever. And who can argue against that? <laughs> they know <laughs> it's an yeah, instrument so that you know, you know. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Who can argue with, hey, God created you. <laughs> and that's pretty straightforward. This is what he created you. Body, you have a soul, you have a spirit. And he also created us. He created you to live with him forever. Right? And then that leads into, of course, you know, how do you want to, you know, Adam, you know, mm -hmm. God created him, he did <laughs> tree of life. They sin. Right? Sin created the separation. Right? And then you kind of go into what it is from there. But when I think about um, what the, the gentleman was teaching, right, that's something that as a human we think about, not overtly, but life and death. Right? We think about life and death every day. Right? And the reason you know. Is because if a car, if you walk down the sidewalk and a car is coming to you, you 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 know, mm -hmm. you're trying to measure <laughs> you're gonna get out the way. life and death, right? So it's not a it's not something on the forefront of our minds, but as humans, we have an instinct to survive. Mm -hmm. Right? 
And so if if you're evangelizing, you know, starting with how a person is created, how God created them, to me, gets them to at least to acknowledge the power of God in their own creation. Not, you know, just the fact that two parents got together mm -hmm. and created them, right? But, and, and these are the scriptures, let's go to the scriptures, because the scriptures going to bear this out. Okay, so Zechariah 12, 1. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm teaching evangelism class tonight, so. <laughs> Sorry. But there was what was on my heart from, uh, from listening to this guy today. Uh, and it just kind of, it, it struck me. It, it, I don't want to say it bothered me, but it just really struck me. Right? And it just struck me to the point I'm like, well, you know, what can I do to, so I'm teaching it tonight that hopefully this can help us as we go out the way around. So Zechariah 12, 1. Who has that? Oh, wait, that's not it. Okay, yeah, 12, 1, that's it. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man living. Okay, now why did I give you another scripture? Because the first scripture dealt with Adam. Mm -hmm. Right? So you say, well, that was Adam. <laughs> right? But then scripture interprets scripture. Mm -hmm. So Zechariah says what? He said, and formeth the spirit of the man within him. Mm -hmm. Scripture interprets scripture. Okay, all right. So let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Okay, somebody have that? Yeah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Okay, so he's talking to Jeremiah here. But the key verse he says, he says, before I formed thee, in the womb, mm -hmm. I knew you. Mm -hmm. So, what is that teaching us? That the formation occurs where? Mm -hmm. In the womb. Mm -hmm. Right? The Bible said, God said, before I knew you, before I um, formed thee, I knew you. Right? Okay. So, that's a whole nother lesson. So, we're not going mm -hmm. to digress into that. So, right? But the key thing is that he sang to him, um, before I formed you, where? In the womb. Okay, so that tells us where God does the forming. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Now, this goes to brother, uh, brother's questions about abortion and con the moment of conception and all those other things. Right? Well, the Bible addresses that too. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So let's keep going. Bible scripture and purpose scripture. So let's go to Psalms 139. Yeah, we may have to read it. 
couple different versions here, but go ahead. Sure, for you. 13 through 16. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelously are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance then yet in uninformed and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Okay, now what's important here, because I'm teaching evangelism class, so what's important here is that if you start out with this, God formed you, God created you, then the Bible says that we are what? How are we made? Fearfully, one we made. Right. Now, part of the challenge with the world today is that there's so much darkness mm -hmm. that exists mm -hmm. in identity, mm -hmm. right, among younger kids particularly. Right? I know I teach it here, you know, they got, every month is probably a new definition mm -hmm. for what a person's identity is. Mm -hmm. Right, binary, non-binary, yeah, um, LG, you know, B, 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 you know, this, um, and that's you know, but the Bible just says simply, God created us, and it doesn't matter where a person is in their life. God created all of us wonderfully. That's it. Right? Now, I know, I don't know about you, but if someone comes up to me and says, hey, you're wonderful, <laughs> you know, I'd appreciate this. <laughs> right? That sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That word wonderful, it just sounds great. It sounds all encompassing. All, you know, you're wonderful. <laughs> Right? But we're all wonderfully made. That's the Bible. But that's not really why I point out the scriptures, but I just want to point that out for evangelism. Um, but the scripture says, <coughs> you, depending on what verse you have, NIV, it says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Um, do you guys have, what did you have, Stefan, with this, the version? Sorry. Uh, my said, um, born. Okay, so born. Okay, so where does this process occur? In the womb. Because the Bible says you knit, in, in I mean, you knit me together. I don't know if anybody in here knits, but my grandmother used to sew. Right? And she would take composite things, different things, and put it together mm -hmm. through thread, right? So she would take some material mm -hmm. from this piece and the material from this piece, and then she would use a sewing machine with the thread, and it would, and then when she finished, it was together. And so when the Bible says you knit, it is the coming together, mm -hmm. and someone who knits, are taking parts and then when they finish it has a hole whatever it is right so Bible teaches us that the, this process occurs where mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that scripture that addresses brother Robinson's point would you would you would you like to um, I'll remind everyone that question because I think a few of us 
few of them were not here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why you want to? Well, it, it wasn't really a question. It was kind of a, a question comment, for yeah. him kind of thing. Yeah. He knew the answer. Right. It was one of those things. <laughs> He's want to make sure we all knew the answer. Right. Just kidding. Well, we know that we receive the Spirit, you know, like you said in Genesis 2, where God breathed and became a living soul. And the question was, is that does that occur at conception? Right. And so on and so on. So the Bible, the Bible tells them that that we meant, you know, Pent using this, or we were formed in the womb. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So remember, these are just things. Now really, for evangelism, that was for our class, but for evangelism, I was pointing out that the scripture says, he says, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully made. God makes us all. Mm -hmm. We're all wonderfully made. Right? And He knits us together in the world. Okay. I know it seems straightforward, but you know, this is these are the things that people don't know a lot of not a lot, but people don't know the truth. Because if they knew the truth, then they wouldn't have, they wouldn't fall, you know, victim to a lot of the worldly, you know, false doctrines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which now are hinging around identity. Yeah. You know, identity this, identity that. You know, who am I? You know, you got kids who are identifying themselves at young ages sexually, using a sexual definition to mm -hmm. identify themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. They're not even gays in that, but they're using that as mm -hmm. a you know, as a defining point. So, anyway, so let's then, then let's go to one more scripture, Isaiah 44 and 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. Okay, now, a couple of things in there. I'm going to give you a, one thing for the class, and then I'm going to give you one thing for the family. So, for the class, it's just another scripture, and the scripture says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer who formed you in the womb. Right? Okay. So scripture interprets scripture. Mm -hmm. right? so that's pretty clear. We've gone through <laughs> several scriptures, right? Which show support the point. So here's the evangelism component. Um, so I said, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer. Okay. So when it says your Redeemer, then that opens up the pathway to understanding that God put in place the plan of redemption mm -hmm. so that all men could be saved. Mm -hmm. and that's what it says when it means redeemer, mm -hmm. right? Because the plan of redemption came into place at the fall. Mm -hmm. That's when the plan was created. It was when Adam and Eve sinned, mm -hmm. right? So as you say, you say, okay, so when you sin, you know, not them, but you say when they sin, God put in place a plan of redemption, mm -hmm. right? And the final component of that plan of redemption was Christ mm -hmm. coming to die, to mm -hmm. believe and live, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the Redeemer is, and we can use that to start that conversation about Christ instead of, you know, just, hey, Christ you know, so now you got creation. God created them, right? Because I don't, people like, I don't think some people really think about the essence of that, yeah. right? But if you're dealing with, particularly if you're dealing with a child who's troubled or, or an adult who's troubled, just to go back to the beginning and say, you know what? God created you. And he created you to live with him forever. And you're wonderfully made. Hmm. Now you're changing 
the landscape from the world's identity to showing them how God looks at them. Right? So there's no need to be LB, <laughs> right? Because the something thing about else. that is that in a year, mm -hmm. it be something else. that's going to change. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? You know, and this is a conversation I had on one of my cruise events when I was sharing with a young lady and she was, and I was, I was, you know, and I asked her, I said, okay, where is the source of that? And she gave me the source. I said, well, when was that person born? And she said, oh, well, you know, they came along. I said, well, but is that absolute? Can you trust in that? What's going to happen next year? And she was like, um. You're right. <laughs> you know, it wasn't about me being right. Well, I was just saying that was her expression. She was like, you're right. Like, how can I depend on that as an absolute? Right? Because the theory may change what the Bible refers to as philosophy. Right? But in here, we know that this is this is an absolute. So, we're wonderfully made. That's an absolute. That is an absolute truth. <laughs> and you know, some people now say that they don't identify with neither sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because again, <laughs> you know, it's it changes. And it has to. Because it's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has to change. Because the truth to. does not change. Yeah. Right. That's, no, that's a great point. point. Right. Mm -hmm. But everything else has mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. to fit the time. Mm -hmm. It has to. It mm -hmm. has to because there's what I call man theism, mm -hmm. right? Which is the philosophy of man. I just call it man theism. Mm -hmm. You know, man got to come up with something else to keep for the attention to be, a credit to be given to them mm -hmm. for whatever reason that may be, whether it's power, mm -hmm. money, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Right? But the beauty of this here is that. If you can get a person to look back, no matter what their circumstances were or are, when they were born, they were created by God mm -hmm. and they were wonderfully made. And that's everybody. Yeah. And they were made to live with God forever. They were created that way. Mm -hmm. And I just think if you can get a person's heart to open up to that, then it can shift away from them defining themselves by how a man defines them. And that's what you want to do. That's the lesson to me. Mm -hmm. Is that no matter how a man defines me, you know, mm -hmm. if I do something and, you know, my boss don't like it, <laughs> he may define me, you know, through his eyes, right? It may not be a great thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Or I could do something well and he may define me through his eyes, mm -hmm. right? But that's going to change. Mm -hmm. That's going to change. But what doesn't change is no matter what I've done, and this is where it leads to in your evangelism, no matter what I've done, I was still wonderfully made and I was made to live with God. That's not going to change. That's absolute. Mm. After that, it's on me mm. to decide if I want to live with God forever. Your choice. That's it. But that's what God did for us. Mm -hmm. And he redeemed us, of course, because he loved us, right? So we can get, get into all that. But I just think in these times, People are so lost in their identities. Good, bad, and a good. Right? But the truth is, they all are made with a body, a soul, a spirit. And so people who get caught up in their body and you know all that, the yeah. fantasies and all that, you know what? Your body going into the dust. I mean, I mean they got the six. We ain't got the six back. <laughs> you know, now my, my, my 20s and 30s, you know. I mean, I got to, but, you know, your body's going <laughs> to the dust. Yeah. Right? Exactly. 
with mine. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I, we're going to dissolve, you know. Mm -hmm. You may have less to dissolve. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but it's going to get there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. You know, so, but my point is that, you know, uh, it was just listening to this guy, just again, not disturbing, uh, concerning. But I figure, well, you know, whenever you hear that, what what can you do? So you got I always believe you got to do something. So I was like, that put on my heart tonight. You know, I just want to impress upon us, you know, how we can incorporate this concept of life and death into our sharing the gospel, right? And I just know that if for me, if someone were to tell me you're wonderful, that means something. And when I read the Bible, the Bible says I'm wonderfully made. That means something, mm -hmm. right? As a human being, that means something. Uh, and so when we're out there sharing the gospel, it's not always, you know, hey, you're not in the right church or, you know, the denominations and mm -hmm. all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just as simple as saying, you know what? God created you. Mm -hmm. He knew you before he formed you in the womb, right? Now, God knows, but we have free will, as the sister laid out to us. But God knows what we're going to do, but we have free will. That's the gift he gave us. Right? But each and every one of us is wonderfully made. No matter what that person has done, they still wonderful. So I think that's something that I think we can we can incorporate into our um, evangelism. Um, so I know I digress tonight, but I really kind of yeah. felt that, you know, on my heart to, to teach, uh, to, you know, go a little deep, to answer the question that the sister put to me about the, the, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Uh, also share with you, um, and I'll pick a, a class, if there's anyone who's interested in kind of the function, you know, the the different functions, um, and you want to stay, I can, if I plan for it, I can pick a class and say, say about 30 minutes, they probably kick us out after about 30 minutes, <laughs> but I can teach some more on that. Because uh, I know it's not taught a lot, but I always try to teach in a context, like put us in context, right? And so that really comes into, now when we get to sanctification, the next semester, we're going to do a sanctification before this class ends, but next class will be the life cycle repeated, but I'm going to do a lot more in sanctification than the week. All right, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. So if you want to get the full-blown sanctification, that's probably going to occur in my spring class. But we are going to talk about it in this class as well. So any questions, comments about that? I had somebody share with me, uh, older lady, who said that all of the LBU stuff, and they get, she says, it's not a trend, like you said, it's gonna change. It's not a trend, it's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, wow. it's really a pandemic. I mean, because people has to come out of, this has to be cured. Mm -hmm. um, and yet he, he makes it, it's not, a, it's not a cycle, but it's a pandemic, just like we had the yeah. pandemic. Mm -hmm. well, think about this though, think about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know we tend to think we think in time continuum, right? We think in time and space. Mm -hmm. But think about this. Um, does anybody know the Sodom and Gomorrah scripture is? Yeah, the Sodom and Gomorrah scripture? Yes. Yeah, so, um, let's see if we can find it real quick. So, let's go to, uh, if I had the minus to find, I could tell you where it is. <laughs> I, I think in scriptural <laughs> concepts. Well, you know, he having problems. Uh, <laughs> so, this is when. Um, not 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 Sodom and This is when um, Lot, Lot, Lot. they were in the they were in the the home and the men came. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's but, uh, yeah. yeah, I wish I could transplant that <laughs> line. <right there. laughs> that might be in trouble. Nineteen. 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 
We're looking for with the man who came to the door. Okay, that's my turn. Okay, let's let's read that. Who has that? I, I, I can read it. So it says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he ran to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Here now, my lord, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night, and wash your feet, and you may rise early and go up your way. Go on your way. And they said, No but we spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned in to him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them Jesus mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, <laughs> mercy. So Lot went out to them through the doorway. Okay, let's stop with that. So does everyone know what know them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. So now they didn't call them mm -hmm. L B G T Q. Yeah. Not the no. But they existed. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So we have to look like we we have to use our spiritual mind, mm -hmm. like particularly in those kind of situations. We have to use our spiritual mind not to use not to bring this down into what I call the mundane mind, which said, Oh, our generation is the worst there ever was. All this stuff. Mm -hmm. All this stuff. It's not new. In, in, the, in the continuum, it's not new. That's right. Right? right. So what that means is, and what it does is that us as believers, once we move outside, we move into the spiritual view. The spiritual view is that it's not new. Right. And so just as there were men of God, women of God, Back then, there are men of God, women of God, now, and the approach is the same. Yeah. Except that now after Christ has come, you know, we have Christ to, we have the gospel to share. So whenever I look out, I don't think, oh man, you know, our generation is the worst, or this is the worst world has ever been. Because you think about it in Noah's time. You go back and you study Noah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was like men's thoughts were evil continually. Right? And in Romans it talks about, you know, man land with man and, you know, right? All of that. So if we see it spiritually, we never get bogged down in the, the, the overwhelmingness of it all. You, you know, Gary, I, I wouldn't be su I wouldn't be surprised if another five ten years that we will hear more about bestiality because oh of what was written even in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's getting so bad that you see that scripture is repeating. You know, and it's unfortunate, but I can see that in five ten years because when someone can say that they don't identify with a sex. That God has created them. Yeah, that's that's frightening. Yeah, now that's exactly it. I remember, I'm you know, kind of old. This is brother Robert. I remember watching TV. A Dick Van Dyke. They didn't sleep in the same bed. They didn't sleep in the same bed. That's right. Now, I was watching a show one night, and they didn't sleep in their own bed either. But they came together. They have sex and then went to their own bed. So I guess that was a new thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you hear all them say all the time, yeah, you only have the freedom to love who you want to love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about that, why should I be able to marry my cousin? Right. Because it's mm -hmm. based on love. Well, right. Or for that matter, why can't I marry my sister? Mm -hmm. Right. Based on love. 
That's all a social um, morality issue. It isn't. It isn't. There's no different than a man with a man mm -hmm. than right. being with someone mm -hmm. who's a close relative. So it's a the version of love. That's what really love is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's 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 uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly. It. Now I will say that um, what we do see is the societal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the shifting. Yeah, this is accepted now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. of societal norms. Yeah. You know, at least yes. to our our, like we can see a shift. Yeah. The the acts themselves have been there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that you live in Roman society, you read Caligula and all that stuff. That was that was commonplace. Only mm -hmm. sexuality was commonplace. Yeah. Right back then. So you you just have reverberations of all this stuff going on. Um, and so I think it's incumbent upon us to understand that from a spiritual perspective so that we don't get overwhelmed and think that, oh man, you know, um, but I do, but, you know, I do, we do have to be in tune with what the particular evils are of the day, right, of the generation of the day. Like if you were in the 60s, there was a lot of weed, you know, the hippies, you know, the, the, all that kind of thing was going on. Um, but you can see a migration. Um, you know, I always say the demarcation is in my mind, you know, not your own mind, and not as a judgment, but the demarcation is in my mind is that time cover that said Obama the first gay president. Oh, yeah. Right? That's just a mental, and he's, he, he has a, it wasn't a standard, he was gay, he said he, 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 he allowed it. Yeah, he was the one who pushed that initiative. Yeah. Right? That yeah. pushed forward the laws mm -hmm. right. to change right. that allow, you know, to change, you know, mm -hmm. states' rights to supersede the Constitution, mm -hmm. right on there, what, how the man and woman think. Yeah, we, we, and I'm not saying anything against him, I'm just saying in my mind, you know, so was, now my son is at college and, you know, we have, no, we have those yeah. conversations, yeah. 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 We had a cousin and she's just beautiful. And she's like, girl. And he said, oh no, it's no big deal, you know. So and so, she's been like that. I just thought, you know, and he was raised in the church. And I'm like, yeah, it is a big deal. But, you know, society has just shoved it, you know, continually down our throat that it's just like, you mm -hmm. just been, yeah. um, it's normal to us. Right. The commercials on TV, just yeah. constant, mm -hmm. constant, constant yeah. to, us, yeah. to the point we're just yeah. going to make you. They can't even have a show without. Somebody being with the same sex person, mm -hmm. whether it's women or men, and you yeah. just after a while, it's just like you know, you know it's nothing know. different. Yeah. What you, yeah. what you say? Yeah. What I you said it becomes normal. It becomes normal, but you know something that's really crazy. I was thinking about. You know how we read in the Bible in the New Testament about how Christians were persecuted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we don't really relate to that, mm -hmm. right? right? Of course, the United States is a <coughs> plain Christian mm -hmm. nation, right? So we don't, you know, we're like, oh, wow, you know, Stephen got stoned, you know. You can't really relate to that, mm -hmm. right? Historically. But now, mm -hmm. I actually have to think about that all the time. Like, so mm -hmm. I was in a, you know, I shared this with you. Also, I was in a harassment training. Uh, and I'm a lawyer, right? And I don't say that from a, I just said, I'm a lawyer, and it was another lawyer who was, during the presentation. And I say that because I looked at it differently than a non-lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, but the, the training was for all, you know, all of us, right? right. So the lawyer was saying, she gave a, a, an example. She said, so if, um, if you have a person who's LBGTQ, right, and they go on the website, I mean on social media, and they see another employee who is advocating against it. Not doing anything profane, you know, but just makes a statement against LBGTQ. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, um, she asked us all, okay, put in your answers, is that harassment? Right, so I put in, you know, I'm a lawyer, I'm like, well, I know the law, I know what harassment is. Mm -hmm. No, she was like, eh, it is. Right? I'm like, 
Right. Now legally, and I and I vehemently disagree. I just didn't want to disrupt the whole thing. Right. Now it's an outside lawyer, so sometimes outside lawyers do. They come up with all these extreme cases, so you can't come back and say that they gave you <laughs> advice. You can't come back and sue us because we said that was harassment. Right. Right. But the point. But that's so now. We're not persecuted like the Christians were in the first century, but we have to be conscious mm -hmm. and aware. Yeah. You know, not fearful, that's not my point. Right. Right? Um, but we just have to be conscious and aware looking at how these things are going down these paths. You know, that as believers, you know, we we have to even be more fervent in what the truth is. That's the you know, broader lesson. Yeah, you know, you know, there, and then we have to, you know, you know, I had a um, upper management manager, you know, he was way up in the company, but anyway, he he was he you know he married another guy, right? So on his desk, you know, he has the picture mm -hmm. on there, and he's proud to say, you know, that's my husband, yeah, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, well, yeah, right. And, no, you're okay. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's troublesome, man, because you can't say anything because you can, you know, number one, lose your job, but you'll be vilified mm -hmm. if you say something about that. And uh, and at a previous company, I did say something about it, but it was just among, you know, some some other people, but not that particular person. And it, you know, said, oh, I think that's okay, and I well, I don't. I know it's not okay, but for me, I don't, you know, I don't accept that at all. But, um, but I say all of that to say, you you can't say anything about that now because you you, you truly you truly will be vilified. People yeah, well, will say, and, and the you point is, this and right, that. That's, <laughs> and the point I was trying to make, and I'll come to you with that. She was saying this was harassment. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's his point. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it's not even so much defending yeah. the gospel so much as it is uh, dealing with now you got an harassment claim mm -hmm. against you. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. right? Not us being afraid to share the gospel. That's mm -hmm. not the point. Right. Uh, but it's like, oh, I got a harassment claim against me. Mm -hmm. You know, because I posted something on social media and then some person who's I don't even know, I haven't even come across in the company. Because that was, she was like, yeah, well, that could be harassment, right? So, you know, so that's my point. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not it's not so much that, you know, we, we're afraid of sharing the gospel, but it's, it's the climate now. We just have to be aware of, you know, things we're saying, generally speaking, and just making sure that, you know, that was my... I was just going to share an experience I had as um, a teacher. Um, this was last year. Um, That's one of your dinosaurs. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. um, um, I teach high school, and so um, I was new at this school, and I was doing attendance, and I was calling the names. <laughs> oh, sure, you know. And so, um, this was just like a big eye-opener thing for me. Um, and um, the student wasn't there, like, I believe her name was Karen. And all the kids, <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Because <laughs> they're kids. And I'm moving on. And then I guess the girl shows up a week later. Oh, it's Kyren. Or no, she didn't even do that. I was like, I'm not calling you. I don't care who, if your name was Jenny, whatever you wanted to call yourself. I'm going to call you what's on this paper. Mm -hmm. right. And because I'm thinking like, this is the name your parents signed you up on. That's what I'm going to call you. I'm thinking like, if there's an emergency, they're not looking for Jenny. They're going to look for who's on the paper. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it was just a big thing. Um, I think this girl had an identity issue. I had several actually that year that had that issue. One girl wanted to be called Eric. Some other boy wanted to be called something else. This person, this, it was too many. I finally said, who taught y'all this? 
oh, so-and-so from downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I was upset at that point because the kid, the girl that had a problem with me calling her name that was written, went to the principal. The principal had a meeting with me. Wow. Yes, pretty much. And then the other principal had a meeting with me. They're pretty much telling me, like, you can lose your job if you don't call them what they want to be called. And so I was like, so they got all the power? I don't have no power. I can't be an adult in this situation. Do you guys forget that these are kids? Like, I mean, that's me talking with them. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. It was just like a very big eye opener for me to the point where I was just like, man, I'm going to be my mom kids. I'm going to get them out of the school system mm -hmm. because it's too, it's so big. Mm -hmm. And to even hear your, what you talked about, your training, you even have some of the, they were training.